the leaked manifesto of the Labour Party was a leaked draft. It wasn't the final version. And uh, any draft has to go through revi several revisions before it's finalized. So my guess is that that was the first draft. It was felt at the time that there wasn't enough strength in the policy on Gibraltar, and therefore the people drafting the manifesto decided to, to, to beef it up. So do you feel that a commitment on just sovereignty could be seen as something of a red herring, as this isn't really where the real threat lies? Well, I think you have to start with a commitment on sovereignty, because let, let's be clear, um, the people of Gibraltar want to know that the government of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland is absolutely committed to um, the sovereignty issue. Once the government is clear on its commitment to sovereignty, it then must be absolutely clear how it's going to defend that sovereignty and how it's going to protect Gibraltar from uh, a Spain, un a Spanish government unleashed by Brexit. Well, people of Gibraltar may be forgiven for being slightly mistrustful of a Labour government. It was a past Labour government that advocated joint sovereignty. Why would this be any different now? I think we should be clear that it's not just a Labour government. It is different members of parliament from different parties. And it is past Tory governments have been, not, have been rather lukewarm, I think. But, but the fact is that this Labour leadership is completely and utterly different from the previous Labour government's leadership. And, but there is one common factor, and that is the number of Labour MPs, uh, as well as Conservative MPs, who are absolutely committed to Gibraltar. And how far do you think Labour would be prepared to go in support of Gibraltar should Spain veto Gibraltar's inclusion in a UK-EU Brexit deal? Well, I think that we, we have a lot of problems ahead on, on any Brexit deal. As you know, the Labour Party wants to secure uh, a, the, the softest possible Brexit for the people of the UK, which effectively means um, us still being part of the single market and part of the customs union. So I think Gibraltar will figure hugely in those negotiations. It will be very, very important to us. After all, Gibraltar's position in Europe is completely unique and is going to be a lot worse once we leave the European Union. Don't forget, it was the Labour Party that campaigned very strongly um, to remain. We are uh, committed to very warm, strong, friendly relations with the European Union once we leave. And if that relationship and soft Brexit was jeopardised by Gibraltar, if Gibraltar was the bargaining chip? Well, I don't, I don't think you can sacrifice uh, any group of people that, are, uh, that consider themselves to be British, whose identity is British, who've made it very, very clear that they want to be um, part of the United Kingdom. I don't think it's for us to say, well, we can just uh, get rid of that little bit to make it be better for the rest of us. It would be wrong to say to one relatively small group of people that because you're geographically distant from us uh, and you're stopping us getting the best deal, that we're just going to ditch you like that and leave you to your own devices and, al and allow Spain to swallow you up. I, I would certainly be opposed to that. And I don't think uh, any Labour MP would be in favour. Uh, we believe in people's right to self-determination. Gibraltarians have made their, uh, their uh, future very, very clear through their own um, right to self-determination through the ballot box. And we have to respect that. If we respect the referendum, we must respect the people of Gibraltar's um, referendum too.